Well, you may have noticed that it is now snowing. This is a, a first for us filming Ag PhD shows to be out in the snow. But you know, when you're talking about a late spring application of soil applied products, this may be just the right weather to get things going. Hey, yeah, I don't have any problem if we apply our herbicide and then we get snow on it. So it's certainly not bad. All right, we're gonna talk a little about weed control in alfalfa and lentils. And unfortunately, the common theme that we have here is you don't have many choices for post-emerge control. So do everything you can to get weeds under control pre. Fortunately, there are multiple effective modes of action that can be used pre in lentils because post-emerge we don't have a whole lot of choices. So when you think about putting down one of the yellow products like Prowl for example, that's a great way to start for grass control but it also adds small seeded broadleaf control to the mix. There are other choices that can get even more small seeded broadleaf control like Metribuzin and Sharpen as well. And you can also use the active ingredient metolachlor. So you've got four different modes of action that could potentially be used pre-emerge. Hey, don't forget about pursuit as well. So there are five different ones that you could use. The thing is you might not want to use that pursuit pre because if you have clear field lentils, you actually could use beyond. Same chemical family as pursuit. You don't want to double up on those. Or you're going to have a carryover issue. The other thing that I would make a comment on here is for the pre-emerge herbicides, low rates are kind of the standard thing. You can't use the full rate that you'd use in soybeans for Sharpen, for Prowl, even Metribuse, and we want to be real careful because lentils are a pretty sensitive crop. Again, post-emerge beyond is really all there is for broadleaf weeds, and that's only if you have clear field lentils. Otherwise, for grass, you can certainly use Clethodim. All right, let's turn the page here and look at alfalfa because it's a little bit different. When it comes to that pre-emerge program, we've got one main product that we really like, and that's Eptam. Now, Eptam has the same active ingredient as the old eradicane that we used to use in corn, but it doesn't have the corn safener. Eptam is really good on grass species, but it also delivers a level of small seeded broadleaf control that we like too. Getting the Eptam out early is important and you have to till it in. That adds a little bit of complication, uh, but it's certainly something that can be managed on your farm. By putting the Eptam out early, we can keep that field clean and allow the alfalfa to get a thick early stand. By doing so, we often choke out much of the later season weed pressure. If we skip this step, you're gonna really struggle and alfalfa is so expensive to seed the first time, you don't wanna to have to be ripping out a stand or having an inferior stand for several years. Over the years, a lot of people have asked me about using some trifluralin in alfalfa. You don't wanna do that because it's too hard in the alfalfa. Technically, if you sprayed it after the alfalfa had germinated, but before it emerged, it might not hurt the alfalfa too bad, but then you have to assume that you're gonna get rain like in a few hours to get that trifluralin in the ground. So our whole point here is don't do it. I know trifluralin is cheap, but just spend the money on Eptam, use a half a gallon or more on Eptam, use a full labeled rate, and you'll have real good weed control to start off the season. Now, post-emergent alfalfa, you don't have very many options. The options historically have been Bucktroll and either Pursuit or Raptor. So if you've got ALS resistant weeds, well, the Pursuit or Raptor aren't going to do you much good. Then you're just relying on Bucktroll, which let's face it, it's got some warts to it too. It's not the best on pigweed would probably be one of the biggest things about it. The other thing with Bucktroll is it's a contact killer only. It doesn't have residual. So make sure you're using 15 gallons of water and smaller droplets to get really good coverage. All right, so Darren mentioned Pursuit of Raptor, I'd call that one. Bucktroll, that's two. The third one I talk about all the time is Buterac, but you can only use an ounce or two. That's old 2,4 dB, and yes, it will be just a little bit hard on the alfalfa, but if you're only using an ounce or two together with a Bucktroll or a Pursuit of Raptor, that definitely does help on many of the broadleaf weeds. Well, the good thing about alfalfa is you're also going to be cutting it multiple times through the year. So if you do have some weeds come through, you will be cutting some of them off. That can help a little bit at least keep them from going to seed but you don't want to rely on cutting weeds as your only control method if you start with a good pre-emerge program like we talked about with Eptam and alfalfa you can generally keep your alfalfa fields fairly clean for a few years last couple things I'll throw in here first of all you can use clethodim or a number of other grass killers if you have grass in your alfalfa post emerge the other thing I'll say is there are some products that can be used in dormant alfalfa 
I'm not big on those. Some people talk about Metribuzin or Velpar. There are a number of them. I just don't like them. I think it's too hard in the alfalfa. Personally, if I've got weeds that bad, it's time to rip the stand up, start over again. And one of the reasons that you may consider taking that alfalfa stand out is if you have our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next.